All right, so today we are starting a new chapter um, and we are gonna be talking about linear versus exponential functions, okay? Um, so you should have the notes available for you and your homework page and your notes page is gonna be the same page and you'll see as we scroll down um, that there are certain sections that are the homework, okay? All right, so let's get started here. Mm -hmm. There we go. All right, so as we look at the graphs themselves, we can see there are some very distinct differences between the linear and the exponential graphs. So the characteristics of a linear graph is that it's gonna be a straight line, all right? Straight line, all right? Um, and then the, Oops, sorry, looks like I spelled it wrong. There we go. Um, and then the characteristics of the exponential graph, you can see it slowly starts to increase and all of a sudden it goes really fast and a really steep increase. So it's a very curved line. Um, in here we can see that it is hugging the X axis. All right, so it hugs the X um, axis. Perfect. All right. Sorry, I'm trying to fill this in with you so you know what to fill in. You'll be good to go. Okay. All right. So when we look at the equations, we can see there's some pretty obvious difference between the two equations. So in the linear equation, x is in line with other numbers, right? So everything is in line. Okay. Regardless of the way it looks, they're all in line with each other. Okay. So this should say in line. And um, there we go. Then when we look over here at the exponential, we can see all of these have an exponent, right? So um, X is the exponent um, within the equation, all right? So if you see an equation with an exponent, you pretty much know right out of the gate that this is gonna be a exponential function. Okay. All right. Last but not least, we can look at the tables. And I find these tables are one of the most, um, I guess, easiest to see. Of course, that's just my opinion. Um, but you can see here, right? So the, pre the um, previous y value is being either added or subtracted, right? So here we can see the y is being added. Um, by three every time. And then here we can see that it is being subtracted by, is that two? Yeah, by two every time, right? And so because we can see that it is the same number every time, we know that that is linear, right? It is gradually and steady increasing or decreasing. So this should be adding, added or subtracted each time. Okay, and there is a common difference, right? So the difference between the first value and the second value is going to be the same, right? So the difference between one and four is three. The difference between four and seven is three, right? Um, there, we're missing the three right there, right? That should say the third one would have been 10, and then the fourth one is 13, and the fifth one is 16. So every time, right, for every one increment of X, we have an increase of three for Y, so that's linear, all right? And here, again, we can see those are decreasing by two every time. All right, so when we look at our exponential, we can see that the previous Y value is being either multiplied or divided by the same number each time. Okay, so let me highlight that for you. So there's a common ratio, okay? All right, so we can see here, um, so as I increase by one here, 
right? I have a multiple of three. So five times three is 15. As I increase by one on X, I can see here, 15 times three is 45. And as I increase one here on X, I can see 45 times three is 135. So I am increasing by a multiple of three every time. And on this side, we can see we are dividing, right? So 16 divided by two is eight. Eight divided by two is four. Four divided by two is two, okay? So um, there is a common ratio or a common factor that they are either being multiplied or divided by, okay? So hopefully that makes sense to you. And if you have any questions, make sure you reach out and ask and I'll be happy to answer those for you. So now we're gonna get into um, the first part of your homework. You're gonna have two parts to your homework. We're gonna do these first ones here together. And we're gonna look at them and then you're gonna do these homework ones on your own, okay? So looking here at the table, remember we're looking, does it, um, for every one increase of X, does Y um, increase by, uh, addition or subtraction, or does it increase or decrease by uh, multiplication or division? So we're looking to see if it is a difference or if it's a ratio, right? So we see here 16 to eight, I have to divide by two to get that. So the fact that I'm dividing automatically tells me that it is what? Yep, it's exponential, okay? Oh, let's uh, insert a circle, right? Circles are fun. Mm -hmm. There we go. And we'll go ahead and make our circle transparent so we can see through it, huh? Oh, let's do the fill. There we go. All right. All right, so we know that um, that's exponential. So now looking here, we have an increase in X of zero, one, two, three. So that's a single increase in X. Now what's happening over here with our F of X, right? So our Y, I've got one to negative one to negative six, negative six to negative 36, negative 36 to negative 216. Hmm. Well, that definitely does not look like adding or subtracting, right? I'm not decreasing, so I know I'm not dividing, so I must be multiplying. And if I look here, I'm actually multiplying by a power of six, all right? One, negative one times six is negative six. Negative six times six is negative 36. Negative 36 times six is negative um, 216. And I know that I'm, uh, multiplying by a positive because it's negative every time, right? Because a negative times a positive is always going to be a negative. So it has to be a positive that I'm multiplying by. So that means that I have a exponential again, right? All right. So very good job. All right. So I want you to do these other two tables on your own. And that's what you're turning in for your homework. This whole box here, along with there's another one here in a minute. So let's go ahead and look at these graphs, right? Remember on the graphs, we know that um, if it is a straight line, it is linear. And if it is a curved line, it is exponential. All right, so looking at these, I have a what? The first one is the first one is, yep, it's linear, right? It's a straight line. Very good. And the second one, is that straight or is it curved? It is curved, yep, so it is exponential, very good. All right, last but not least down here, we've got our two, um, two equations. And so we wanna look at these two equations and say, okay, so is X in line with the other numbers or is do I have an X? Um, a exponent. So in this first one right here, y equals two to the x, right? That is exponential. The x is in my exponent, okay? And in my other one here, I have two x minus five y equals 13, which makes that linear. The x is in line with everything else. All right, so make sure you do this homework portion and turn that in. And then you're also gonna do this one down here, okay? We've got a word problem that we're gonna look at. So let's first look at um, kind of some tips and tricks on how to know the difference between 
a linear word problem and an exponential word problem. What are you actually looking for, right? So if it's linear, it's gonna say something like the same amount is being added or subtracted um, from the starting amount. Um, and if it, um, oh, I'm sorry, it could also say has a rate of change listed, right? So miles per hour, um, amount earned per day, right? So those are specific amounts added every single time. Now, exponential is going to say something like uses words like doubles, triples, halves, right? Because when we double something, we're multiplying it. When we triple something, we're multiplying by three. If we're having something, then we're dividing by two, okay? Um, has a starting amount and a percentage increase or decrease, right? So whatever that starting amount is, it says it's going to increase by 13%. It's going to decrease by 2%, whatever it is. Um, you notice that the amount is doubling or tripling, okay? So those are kind of some key ideas on how you're going to know if you are dealing with a word problem that is linear or a word problem that is exponential. So let's look at this first one together, and then you're going to do the second one as your homework, okay? So in a single elimination tournament, starting with 128 teams, half of the remaining teams are eliminated each round. So is that linear or exponential? Well, let's look up here and see what we're looking at. So it says a single elimination tournament starting with 128 team members. So 128 is my number that I'm looking at. And I am halving it um, for each elimination round, okay? So if we look here, right, being added or subtracted, that's not what we're looking for. Um, doubles, triples, or halves, right? So it is exponential because we are halving it each round. All right. So go ahead and put my circle on there. Okay. So go ahead and you're going to do number two as your homework, um, work through that using these as your tools uh, to help you know if it is linear or exponential. And then you're also going to do the six problems here uh, for your homework. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. And um, if you do have any questions, feel free to let me know and I will be happy to um, answer those questions for you. Okay. All right. Thanks guys. Bye.